a simple and important explanation of Wi-Fi technology for parents, teachers, and administrators. Wi-Fi is one of the most misunderstood technologies ever to be released to the general public. Wi-Fi has two very different microwave transmission mechanisms, each with a very specialized function. One, the beacon signal. The beacon signal broadcasts the name of the wireless network and provides an opportunity to enter a password to access the network. It manages the initial connection between computer and network. Two, the data stream. The data stream functions on an on-demand basis only after connecting to the wireless network. It is only active during data transfer to and from the network such as sending and retrieving email, viewing a video, listening to streaming audio, and downloading or uploading attachments. Here's a perfect example of what the beacon signal was designed to do. It allows you to choose the wireless network that you want to connect to. The beacon signal. <clears throat> the beacon signal is on constantly, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If the wireless router's maximum range is rated at 800 feet, such as the most recent wireless N models or the wireless N transmitters that are being installed in schools, then the beacon signal must reach 800 feet in every direction in order to conform to the specs of the standard. This is to ensure that laptops and other devices 800 feet from the router can connect to the wireless network. Now in a typical classroom, students are anywhere from 5 to 20 feet away from the wireless transmitter, so putting transmitters in that have 800 feet of range definitely seems like overkill. According to a former wireless industry insider, the beacon signal does the most whole body exposure damage to human cells because it's constantly transmitting at full power. Here is an example of what a beacon signal sounds like. The data stream. On the other hand, the data stream is intermittent, like a cell phone. It's only active when there's an actual transfer of data, the equivalent of when one makes a cell phone call, when one receives an email or text message, or accesses the internet on a smartphone. The problem with the beacon signal. In September 2004, Swisscom, a Swiss-based mobile carrier with 5.8 million customers and an A rating from Standard & Poor's, registered a global patent for a device to lessen or eliminate the beacon signal. The patent mentions the following about damage to DNA, which is referred to in the patent as hereditary material. You can find the entire patent at tinyurl.com forward slash swisscom dash patent. In this excerpt, the term mobile radio radiation refers to Wi-Fi, cell phones, and cordless home phones. There is also the admission that this damage happens at a non-thermal level, far below radiation levels associated with heating of tissue. When a leading European telecom provider with 5.8 million mobile subscribers and an A rating from Standard & Poor's admits that they've come up with a design for a wireless router that eliminates the beacon signal because their design lessens the damage to DNA, this would seem to indicate that there was a serious problem with Wi-Fi and the beacon signal. Some electrosensitive people can immediately feel or sense the beacon signal when exposed to Wi-Fi as the beacon signal is constantly on. In many cases, the initial sensation is one of dizziness, disorientation, and a strange sensation in the head, as well as headaches and nausea. Those whose hearts are affected by Wi-Fi may instantly experience heart arrhythmias. After a few minutes, anxiety will often present. Depending on how sensitive the individual is, extreme debilitating reactions may occur immediately. <clears throat> the one disclaimer is, in some individuals, it occurs only hours after exposure. There's a two-minute YouTube video on how Wi-Fi can affect the heart at tinyurl.com forward slash Wi-Fi dash health. Finally, unexplained anxiety in children is a modern problem, possibly at epidemic levels. It is regularly misdiagnosed and over-medicated by family doctors. These are some of the symptoms of electrosensitivity. Usually, an individual will have a cluster of these, not all of them, but a cluster, depending on what their weak, uh, weak link is in their body. 
For more information, please go to www.citizensforsafetechnology.org.